everyone. Welcome to our um, University Center seminar on sustainable practices for longevity of businesses. We have um, Stacy Sacco here with us today who will be presenting. Um, Stacy, I'll let you take over. Okay, great. Good morning, everybody. Uh, you're all muted, but uh, anyways, we wanted to say good morning. And thank you to UNM and the uh, Lobo Rainforest and their programs for uh, asking me to come join you today and thank you for joining us. So um, let me see if I can get everybody in my screen. So I've got about seven slides to go through and then I've got a couple lists I wanna present to you guys while we're here because we've got about an hour. But um, I assume uh, Cecilia, they can unmute themselves. So if anybody has any questions, rather than wait to the end, a lot of programs have a QA and a at the end. If you have any questions while I'm talking, just unmute yourself and jump in. And a couple of you I'm gonna pick on. Ava, I see now, I'm gonna pick on you in a little bit. So. <laughs> Um, anyways, yeah, hi. <laughs> so delighted to see all of you. Let's see if I can get this to come up. Um, so what I wanted to talk about was some of the things I've been researching lately, and that's this whole idea of uh, long, uh, long-term businesses. It's interesting, I gave this speech initially at the Edgewood Chamber of Commerce meeting about five months ago, and a couple times soon. <clears throat> But everybody in the audience from uh, the East Mountains, it really resonated with them because most all of them were a typical, typical New Mexico family business and they'd been around three, four generations, which, so that's not uncommon, but uh, I'll tell you a little story on how this whole idea came about and then uh, offer some ideas on how you can create, well, maybe a thousand year business, but certainly a long-term business and some of the you're gonna want to, um, consider in terms of how do you create a successful business. So, so the story goes, I, you know, I've been, uh, I don't think my bio is on there or it is somewhere, but I worked for uh, West, the Women's Economic Self-Sufficiency Team down here in Albuquerque as their, I was the regional manager for Rio Rancho for several years. And so I'm hanging out a lot with the SBDC, SBA, uh, ABQID, a lot of the different, uh, entrepreneurial um, organ organizations that support entrepreneurs here in New Mexico. And the typical story everybody always says is, oh my goodness, nine out of 10 startups fail in so many years. I've seen different stats on that, seven out of 10, nine out of 10, whatever. And the last time I, and I've heard it a long time, uh, SBDC is sort of their pitch or score is nine out of 10 businesses fail. So you should have a business plan without a business plan you uh, are like dri you're like driving a car without a steering wheel. So you should have a plan of goals around what you want to do. And it's cute so your way to sort of pitch the idea that you should do more planning. But that nine out of 10 is telling me, okay, so we should focus on the nine that failed and then look at reasons why they did and then how can we improve on that? If any of you have ever done any, or listened to tapes like motivational tapes by Dennis Waitley, He's always all about quit focusing on the negative or the don'ts and get away from doing those things, but focus more on the do's and where can you do something positive to move your company or your self forward, personal, professional goals. So when they said that nine out of 10, I thought, oh my God, I've heard that so much. And I thought, you know, I'm tired of that because I'm not a negative guy. I like happy endings. I'm a Disney movie guy. So I like the happy ending. So I thought, well, what's the one business that didn't fail? I've heard about the nine that did. What about the one that didn't? So that prompted me to ask that question. Let's see if I can get my slides to work here. And I thought, well, who's the oldest business on the earth? Let me flip ahead here. So I did some research and found that there's a construction company in Japan that started in 578 AD. And the, quite a few of the oldest businesses are certainly where there was uh, human um, societies. So it's going to be Asia's the oldest places on the earth. So of course, they're going to have the oldest businesses. Then you've got Europe, uh, maybe the Middle East or mid. Uh, then, then you move over to the United States. And I've got some lists of that. But it prompted me to say, okay, who are the top 10 oldest businesses in the world, 10 oldest businesses in the United States? 
I do, do not have here, and I'm working with uh, the Parish Library at UNM. We're trying to figure out who are the top 10 oldest, I'm saying this right, top 10 oldest businesses in New Mexico and top 10 oldest business in Albuquerque. So the 10 oldest business we found in New Mexico, the problem is when you start looking for that, nobody kept really good records of that. So I'm going to find them and I'll update this slideshow with uh, that information. But for now, it's interesting to look at, um, you know, on a global scale, and then in the United States, which businesses are the oldest? A lot of them have to do with commodity products. If you look at the rest of the list, there's about 100, more than 100 businesses over 1,000 years old. They're mostly in Asia. They mostly involve liquor, which I thought was funny. But, oh, well, and watch is funny, because the oldest business in New Mexico is that one so that I can figure out so far is the restaurant in Las Cruces or Mesilla. There's a uh, restaurant bar that's been around probably the old west. So, you know, that would make sense. So anyway, so then I thought, well, let me figure this out. Why are they still around a thousand years later? So I started looking up and I found lots of articles and there's lots of books. So I'm going to show you some of the commonalities in these. Let me go back real quick. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about reasons for failure and then look at where I've put some data that I found on some of the businesses that have been around. And it's interesting. I teach entrepreneurial studies at UNM. Most of us used to teach the five-year financials. In fact, I was vice president of marketing for Transamerica years ago. And we'd always do five, ten years on financials. Well, the world changed. And so now more and more when I, after... Um, working there many years in other corporate jobs and helping with people with small businesses, you want to definitely make sure you get through the one year. So it's not five years, but look at one year. Well, that's antithesis to what I'm saying. How do we get a thousand years, not one? So now, um, yeah, it's on another slide. Uh, there's a, a Japanese company that's, that's teaching you how to think about running a 100 year business. So you're doing 100 year business plans. Wow, that's just so out of the ordinary in my mind. But so that's three generations, which like I was saying over in the East Mountains, almost all those businesses I was talking to were three and four year, three and fourth generation businesses, which I don't think is unlike what's going on in New Mexico uh, because of our focus on families. So, um, well, anyways, let me, um, I was going to have each of you introduce yourselves. And if we have some time, I'll do that towards the end. Just so uh, part of what I've always done is try to get people to talk to each other and be networking. So we'll do that. But I do have a couple of you I see I'm going to pick on. So, But um, let me go through a few of my slides. And let's get to maybe some questions from you guys. So why do uh, seven or 10 reasons why seven out of 10 businesses fail within the, within 10 years. And like I say, there's lots of data out there about different stats on this. But uh, a lot of it's just, I think, starts with you're not creating value for your customers. You know, Ava is there. I'm going to pick on you in a minute about creating your, um, your brand identity through doing a positioning statement. Well, that gets back to what's your value so in a minute, I'll, if you don't mind, I'll just ask you about maybe a comment on that. But um, so failure to connect with your target audience. If you're not creating value and you're not connecting to your market, well, you got a problem because the markets are changing. And boy, do we see it now. Now, maybe a thousand years ago, businesses didn't change too much, but our technology has really influenced a lot of changes. So you better be staying in touch with your customers whether you're doing something like an annual survey of your customers' needs or you're doing some, you're reinventing or revisiting your business plan every year. Not such a bad idea. Um, failure to create an effective sales funnel. Well, that's, you know, huge now. And especially with marketing, uh, it's really changed. It's not just knowing who your customers are through a survey, but it's how do you connect to them? And that medium is changing. Of course, we're moving more and more online now. So you, you better be staying in touch with your customers. Uh, lock, lack of authenticity and transparency. So a lot of businesses 
are not uh, letting their customers know what they're doing in terms of quality and, you know, staying in touch with their um, outreach to the community. And so I talk about it later, but there's now this concept of the B Corporation, which is, uh, I think we used to have, like we have C Corporations, we have LLCs here in New Mexico. And I believe I talked to the, I saw the mayor speak on this not too long ago that there was this concept of a B corporation, which is the third bottom line, meaning first bottom line is financial, second is your social impact, and third is your societal, or, or excuse me, environmental impact. Uh, when I worked at West, we were one of the first companies or organizations here in the state to do a triple bottom line uh, um, annual report. So we had at the back of it, what what? so we were trying to be transparent about how we're impacting our bigger community, not just making money or taking care of our constituents. Um, inability to control expenses. I see that a lot. People have, they don't have really good financial planning and you should be checking that quite often. Uh, lack of strategic and effective leadership. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. You probably should have, if you're gonna be around a thousand years, you better have some kind of sustainability in terms of your leadership. So you should have succession planning, something around that. If you don't have a succession plan or some way to, to um, evaluate your leadership so that they're doing the best job they can to maintain the organization. I was the executive director for a while of the Family Business Center at UNM and the Anderson School of Management. They're gonna be doing some seminars here soon. So you might go to uh, sbi.unm.edu, which is this, um, did I say that right? No, www.mgt.unm.edu. It's the Anderson School of Management. We have a family business center over there that uh, the Parker, Jim and Linda Parker started. That's a big deal. And you've got to have, I laugh because whenever they have seminars, it's not about how to run your business. It's about how to keep your family happy. This is about family business. And any of you work for a family business. I worked for my dad for a while. He owned an auto shop. So a lot of those workshops are not, some kind of a financial guru to teach you about how to run your business. They're more about, they're more psychiatrists telling you how to get along with mommy and daddy and have all these different roles. Well, you better have everything in writing because in a way it's like a partnership. So who's in charge of what, who's, who's responsible for what? When uh, the parents, something happens, they retire or they pass, who's now in charge? Is it brother or sister? Is it, you know, the son? I don't know, it's always an issue. But that deals with effective leadership. And then failure to build an employee tribe. I think there's a huge issue now. I certainly see it. I publish a website where I help people find jobs. And I get a lot of calls from people who are not happy with their um, the culture at their company. But you can create a great culture. And that's part of keeping your business. So the flip side of this list is, you know, do the opposite. If it's failure, well, build and definitely build an employee tribe. And then create systems. If any of you have ever been involved with Quality New Mexico, which I was an examiner and then a team lead for that for seven years, we talked at length about creating processes and looking at uh, is what we're planning to do, are we doing it, are we measuring it, and then are we adapting or changing it? It's that plan, do, check, act process. So wherever you can do, create a process. So there's some articles on this that, and wherever I can, I put a source in here. All this information will be available. Cecilia's in here from SDC. I think they'll be posting that on their website. So we'll have a way for you to get any of this information. Um, I laugh because I remember years ago, I used to hear about the first, second, third generations. There's kind of a joke. First generation starts the business, second generation runs it, and the third generation ruins it. I think you don't want that to happen. So what can you do to build in processes so that that doesn't happen? Um, let me go to the next slide. So after reading lots of articles and there'll be some books I refer to, I've gone through three of them now and saying, well, what worked? Well, it's this, what factors supported longevity? So you better have some really strong, smart, focused leaders. I. Um, years ago, and I'm not sure how you would do this, but you probably could for your business. It's part of that written document about where your, what's your big strategic plan. 
uh, years ago, I was uh, I actually was, as I said, VP Marketing at Transamerica in Orange County. And I um, started the Orange County AMA, American Marketing Association. What was pretty obvious when looking at the PRSA group there in the AdFed, boy, they'd come and go depending on who the leaders were. So I made sure that, you know, I, I was the founder president, that I would have two, three other presidents lined up so we'd be grooming them as we go and we'd give them committee projects. So getting these people identified early on about who your leaders are gonna be, I think is very important. So that's part of what, what I created as a succession plan. So I'd look at your own organizations or your own business and say, you know, who's in charge and get over your ego if you're the owner. <laughs> you know, like somebody's gonna take over. So think about it. You know, I don't know. I know you don't wanna think about it, but think about it, who's next? Um, marketing, having a strong brand identity and a strong unique selling point about who you are, in particular that you're telling that, giving, getting that message out there. And that I think you have to, do I have it here? No, I don't, but I think you should be, it's in another slide, definitely be evaluating your customer's needs, whether that's an annual survey. If you're not doing that, you should probably add that in. The other one that I, I started doing or helped start doing, I was the vice president of Kirtland Federal Credit Union, vice president of marketing. We created a transactional survey. So whenever you do something at the credit union, you get an email later saying, well, how was it? What'd you do? What was your experience like? What can we do to add, to make it better for you? So we actually got to the atomic level of looking at each transaction. And Ava, since I'm talking about brand, can I pick on you for just a minute? Now, Ava, I met recently. She's up in Santa Fe. She's a marketing expert here in New Mexico. Delighted to have met her because I really can resonate with her story. But she, I'll do a little promotion for you here, but she has been helping lots and lots of small businesses throughout the state and help basically becoming their marketing owner. You should call yourself the, our marketing department. That'd be a new name. <laughs> but if you need help as a small business, you can't necessarily hire a full-time marketing person, so you'd hire somebody like her. But she spoke to my classes the other day, did a fabulous job talking about creating your brand. So maybe take a minute and tell us about what's that process look like to create a, um, a positioning statement? Yeah, thanks, Stacey. Uh, I really love this presentation. I love the, the zoomed out view of uh, what companies have withstood the test of time and why. I think this is really brilliant. Um, yeah, we, we've been talking about uh, positioning statements um, as a, a planning guideline for the business, but not something that you just do at the beginning and then put in a drawer, but something that you keep coming back to and examining what's the market situation like now and am I really meeting my top customers' uh, most important needs? Um, so within uh, the mission of your business, uh, you, you might have a different message for each of your target customers. There might be uh, different types of people that buy your product or service for different reasons. And for each of them, you're talking to them directly and letting them know why your product meets their needs better than any of the other competitors uh, based on what's most important to them. Um, so that's something that when I work with businesses, with my clients, um, we just keep coming back to that every few months even uh, sometimes of uh, looking at what the competitors are doing and uh, are we really standing out from everyone else and and framing all of the messaging that we do with marketing around uh, the idea of how we can make the biggest impact and is the perception from our marketing message that we are the best. Um, is that what you wanted me to say? Yeah, well, let me ask you a question. So I, I um, over the many years I've been in marketing, we do a marketing plan. That could be 10 pages, 30 pages. The positioning statement is really, is it one page or is it two pages? What does that look like most, most of the time? Uh, you know, I, I kind of have a, a formula where I try to make it a, a few sentences even of um, uh, starting out what, uh, what general industry are you in? 
you know, you want to let people know right away, uh, am I a contemporary art gallery? Am I a customer relationship management software? But uh, start out and give people a framework of how to think of your business and and don't call it something goofy where you're going to make your customer feel stupid because they don't know right away what you do. Um, and then, uh, so I, I say, uh, we are the, uh, the business within this industry category. Uh, we're a contemporary art gallery uh, that provides this main benefit. Uh, and you list out your most important benefit to this specific type of customer. It might be a, a millennial who loves to travel uh, and we're better at it than anyone else because we focus on this. This is the one thing that we have that no one else has. Um, so I think hitting those, those four main points of what industry are you in, um, who's your target customer, uh, what's your main benefit for that customer, and how are you different from everyone else. Um, I break it down to those four sentences first. And, um, and you might have a few different statements if you have a few different types of customers. Uh, maybe you have a, an older customer segment and the benefit you provide to them is, is different based on their needs. You know, maybe you're in the healthcare industry or, uh, or maybe you serve two different geographic locations. Um, so you can have maybe four different statements aimed at your four most profitable customer groups. So the other thing is, I assume, the problem with a lot of this stuff is you'll create a plan. I used to work, as I said, at Transamerica. I went out to a lot of our branches and the president asked me to go to each of these. I was like an internal consultant for a while. So I went out to each branch and was supposed to update the uh, strategic plan for the whole company. So of course I'm at a branch office. I said, do you have that strategic plan You know, we've been working with you on? And they go, yeah, hold on. Oh my God. They go to the closet and go, it's up here in the closet somewhere. I'm like, yeah. So it's not a working document or a living document. And my sense of it when I've talked to you is this whole idea of a positioning statement is it's a proactive living document. It's not, you're, you're sort of not saying, well, here's what we've been doing. So now I'm going to create a document reviewing that. No, it needs to be part of a plan going, it's more forward looking. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, and I think the, the reason I keep coming back to it, too, with my clients is so, so everyone really has it ready in their mind, and if someone walks up to them and says, oh, I'm from an electric utility company, why should I buy your product? You say, well, and just have it ready right there, and it's the, right. the direct message to that type of person. I think we talked about some of the companies I work for, you have – you'll have, let's say, 10 employees or in a department, but they all have a different message about what it is the company does. You're better off if everybody's telling the same story. So this document mm -hmm. or something like that is going to help you all be in the same uh, uh, bowling lane or whatever. You're in the same lanes. Exactly. So you have a, a consistent message across the board. You know, one of the things that, and I, we, you and I didn't talk about this, but there is uh, underneath it all, you probably need to know, especially as a small business, what's your why? If any of you have seen Simon Sinek's video on that, you, I would definitely encourage you to, to go there and look at it. In fact, I'll add it. I don't think I have it on my slides, but I'll add it. There's this idea of not how you get things done or what you do, but why are you doing it? And if you can tie your personal why to your business, which you probably already have on some level because you're passionate about solving some bigger problem on the planet, so creating your why. Well, interesting enough, there's now Dr. Gary Sanchez, who lives down here in Albuquerque. He's a dentist. I know some of the story. He could probably explain it more. I don't think he's on here today. But um, he read some of the Simon Sinek's books, saw the video. Where most all of us that teach in the MBA program show that now as part of our course curriculum. But he created a thing called the Why Institute, which you can look up. He's identified over some research that there's nine whys you might have, which would be, you know, part of your why might be to make a difference in the community. Okay. So then how does that get applied in your how and what in your business? So it's worthwhile to go to the why Institute, because I think underneath 
in that idea of a why is what you're talking about, Abe. It's about what's your purpose, what's your mission, and then that becomes part of your branding. So uh, if you haven't gone to the Y Institute, you might, I encourage you to go there. I don't make any money for promoting Abe or anybody else here today. So, uh, you know, we're just all, these are just people I really appreciate as being some great talent that we have living here in New Mexico. We're very lucky to have all of them. So, you know, I'm not, I can't see everybody's names, but if there's anybody here who's had some experience in marketing with their small business and can add to what Ava was talking about, I'd sure like you to open up your mic and just say, here's something that worked for you. So I'll give you an opportunity. If I have any other marketing ad agencies or consultants here, that would be good to hear from you too. So anybody? Okay. Um, so the other piece of this is your, I'll keep moving, but if you think of something, just pop in. And thank you, Ava, for your comments. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. And, uh, and if you want to reach her, by the way, it's uh, Zen Box Marketing, right? And, That's uh, right, yeah. Up Thank in Santa Fe. <laughs> well, you're about 3,000 feet higher than me, or 2,000 feet, being up in Santa Fe. So. Um, I should be looking up to you. I'm looking at your pictures below me. Anyways, uh, the operations, I think, are what really becomes part of your delivery of a product or service is through the some level of quality. I put in here Albuquerque Quality Network and Quality New Mexico. Those are two excellent organizations to get involved with and maybe actually even apply to them to evaluate your business. If you do quality New Mexico, you got to fill out like a 50 page report or document, and then you can win any one of uh, four levels of awards. I've read many of those 50 page reports and done several too, so I get it. But it's good to do a self-examination of your company and what you're doing and then look for these processes so you can repeat that great performance that you're talking about in Ava's um, positioning statement or let your uh, the marketing plan. Well, you've got to have something that consistently you're doing as a business. So now the big term that's used a lot is continuous improvement so that you're benchmarking yourself against other companies that are doing a better job than you in terms of maybe speed of delivery or quality of the products. So that's huge, more than you really realize, and especially now. The other thing is in marketing, I, I don't want to lose sight of this, is that you really need to protect your idea too. So if you do not have trademarks or um, copyrights or even probably even a bigger scale is some kind of a IP or intellectual property around your product, somebody might be able to steal your, steal your idea. They'll reverse engineer what you do and then come out with the same thing. So you need to put some barriers up to that. Uh, the one lawyer I work with a lot who I have come speak to my classes is Larry Donahue from Law for Small Business. He's right across the street there from STC. And then STC is a huge resource for that in terms of doing work on getting your IP together. They'll help you go through that process. And Cecilia, she's on here. I don't know if Kara is too. Cecilia, do you want to say anything about that? She, is she there? Anyways. Oh yeah. Any any help with uh, what do you guys do in terms of the in uh, getting into what you guys offer in terms of intellectual property? Um. So we offer IP services for the University of New Mexico for students and faculty who have um, created an invention or some type of technology. Um, so our services, our IP related services, are mainly for UNM. Um, but we do offer other like um, resources and programs for small businesses, um, including our Checky Venture Lab, which um, offers office space um, or like an office address, a business address for small businesses, as well as like um, some marketing research support and such. That's kind of what we offer. But I know they're very, very connected to the other lawyers that are more involved in intellectual property, like Peacock and Myers and some others here in town. There are several. So they'd be a great place to connect in if you need some help, knowing that your product could be uh, identified as an, um, getting a license. 
or getting uh, your um, patents. And I see uh, Anita's here from UNM Taos. What, what uh, since some of the folks that are in this are from Northern New Mexico, Anita, can you comment what connections do you have up there to help or workshops maybe you guys offer in terms of marketing operations, any of that? Since I, since I got you here, if you can jump in, I'd sure love to hear from you. Up, oh, she's up. She's getting her coffee warmed up. Well, we'll catch her in a minute. So anyways, I think, <clears throat> so some of the other um, uh, resources I went to was this person, he's French, but he um, talked about, um, he, he looked at 30, 30 centuries old businesses and asked the same question, why are they still around? What made them? What are the commonalities? So these are three, four of them that are sensitive to their environment, remain in harmony with the world around them. That's interesting because I know, um, again, UNM's trying to offer now, especially Anderson School of Management, we just had a workshop on the B Corporation idea and there's a, more of an emphasis on that. There was always a, uh, <coughs> is it Alan, Tal Alan Oliver started the, New Mexico Green Chamber down here in Albuquerque. And now there's a New Mexico Green Chamber, very strong group up in Santa Fe, another one in Silver City. Uh, the Albuquerque one has sort of gone sideways. And I'm going to be launching here soon a green business meetup group to bring in some green tech uh, connections and some workshops on that. But that'll be outside of my work at UNM. Um, what, Stacy? Yes. Hi, this is Rose Reza from Taos, New Mexico. Yes, Rose, please. How are you? I know Anita, I, Anita stepped out for a little bit, but, um, you know, we have an incredible group here in Taos, you know. Oh, I know. You guys are awesome. Tell us uh, more. Uh, I'm the executive director of Taos Hive. We're still planning on opening in, in, uh, in uh, August of 2020. Uh, it is uh, the hub of internet-based vocation and education. You and I have talked about it briefly, but it's going to be a co-work business incubator and UNM classes under one roof. And um, we have, you know, when you think of Anwar from SBDC here, he's just fabulous. Yes. Uh, we have incredible web developers. Um, you know, we have some, you know, one of the things we do have here in Taos is we have a lot of retired executives with marketing, finance, uh, incredible uh, support. You know, we have 10 house entrepreneurial network uh, that works with our local entrepreneurs so you know we really we really have an incredible ecosystem of talent uh, that we're really hoping as we move forward uh, in the opening of the hive will really be a great support from a marketing operations uh, um, support to our uh, local entrepreneurs so uh, the one thing that's always interesting when I worked at West it was a lot of talk about years ago, they used to have some kind of a program up in Taos, but it was for artisans. And I know there's now a Spark, Spark New Mexico group. I just met them the other day. They're looking to do some kind of a, a smaller version of that, what we were doing, I guess, up in Taos down here to be an incubator helping connect the funding, but it was for very focused on artists or creatives. Yeah. I think what's we cool about what you guys are doing is you're doing that but Taos is much more high tech now than ever. So you've really connected to all these other industries, which is fabulous. Is that right? But, you know, the exciting aspect is that we have UNM Taos, our core partners, Taos Community Foundation, and we have, um, oh my gosh, I'm thinking of, I'm, I'm uh, Kit Carson Cooperative. Uh, and, and they're our core partners, but the other aspect, you know, it's, it's collaboration is so important. Uh, you talk about it all the time, you know, know. Uh, you know, we are stronger together. And um, so we really have been, um, you know, Arrowhead, you know, you're, you're close. I don't know if you visited with Arrowhead Center of Innovation, but you know, Taos, I've worked with them for three years. We are an ASIP community. And so that's really given an opportunity for us to have uh, funding for special prog uh, programs. But uh, we, you know, we did kick off uh, last year was a USDA grant uh, under Healthy Futures. And that was a, that was strictly focused towards our uh, Taos Pueblo and our Northern New Mexico uh, artists. But, you know, now more than ever as leaders, 
we have to really be out there and really have that, have some strong arms and shoulders because our people need our help. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and how we pivot today, how we, you know, how we can really, uh, uh, you know, help them. You know, one of the biggest opportunities we have seen is you really have three buckets. You would think today in our digital age that everyone has the ability to go online, and, but people are struggling with that. You know, you have those entrepreneurs today that don't even have an online presence yet. You have those entrepreneurs who have online presence, but they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> you know, right. because most of your entrepreneurs are the creatives. They're doing everything. So it's, you know, and then you have those that, you know, uh, have incredible sites, but have they really maxim maximized uh, the SOE and where they're reaching out. Uh, but um, I have total faith in our community and, um, you know, Victoria, who's on, and she's a big supporter of yours, Stacy. Hey, Victoria. Uh, she's going to be jump, back. Can you jump in, too, Victoria? I'd like to hear. And I'm, before yes. you do that, Rose, how do we get a hold of you for anybody that's here today? Uh, Taushive at unm.edu. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and you could go to our Taushive Facebook page, or you can go to our Taushive website. And that's uh, Hive. The Taus Hive. The bees. Yeah, Hive. Bees. H <laughs> H-I-V-E. And uh, also, um, what else? I was thinking, oh, my, my phone, my cell is 575-776-7903. And, and I know, uh, I, Ava, I, mean, I would love to visit with you to see what you're doing, you know, because it's all about understanding and, and, and really getting together on best practices that support our community. So you mentioned yeah. another group that I spoke. Yeah, Ava, she's, uh, you guys are going to mutually beneficial right there. I can just see. We're going to hit it off. Yeah. They're going to be buzzing. Okay, sorry, I'll sorry. be quiet now. <laughs> no, that's okay. And Victoria, I want you to jump in. I was just going to say, I did speak a few months ago, I may be longer, at the Taos Executive uh, Entrepreneurs Network 10. Man, that's a great group. What was that gentleman's name? Who's the head of it? He invited me up. Is it John? That's uh, that's Steve Fullendorf. Steve, yeah. Oh my God, what a great group! And you know that the ten is going to live within the hive because it what? makes sense. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so it's it's going to be a real powerhouse. And is the hive going to be at the UNM campus? No, the hive is going to be. I, I'm not like. Well, it's out, but we haven't. We're finalizing the lease agreement right now. Well, uh, but it's going to be in the information here. Okay. Yeah, it's, well, it's going to be in the command center at Kit Carson Command Center. Very cool location. It's, is it related to one of your microbreweries up there? No, just kidding. <laughs> Maybe someday it'll have one attached. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. So, Victoria, tell us a little bit about what you're doing too, since you're open. Well, and just to like uh, echo Rose, I mean, we're obsessive compulsive networkers in Taos. So just that you, so you all know that, I mean, yeah. we really try not to operate in silos. So I'm looking through the attendee list and we have uh, Taos Main Street, Elizabeth is on. Uh, we have our, you know, Taos Chamber. I mean, this is really amazing stuff that we do in Taos. Uh, we have Anwar from the Small Business Development Center, which is housed at UNM Taos. So we, we, network here and we get things done. So we really are trying to um, get something off the ground to start working with our entrepreneurs, doing some quick training so that they can get back to work. Uh, one of the things that Anita and I, along with the Taos Chamber, are looking at is some training on reopening. How does, what does that look like? You know, the, the cleaning, the PPE, even, you know, do our, can our businesses get a hold of these touchless uh, thermometers to be monitoring people? I mean, just how do we get a hold of all these things? So that's mm -hmm. what we're really trying to look at right now. And I really want to thank all of you who are on the, the Zoom meeting today, because this meeting uh, originally was going to be in Taos at our Clower campus. So it's heartbreaking that we are here in this format, but I'm so happy that we still continued and we're finding new ways to do things. So this is the cool part, right? So with this crisis comes opportunities. And I think we all are really looking at how we can um, make things better in the digital world. How do we help our community members, our students? You know, these are just things that are going to um, make our processes stronger. So I was going to say, yeah, I miss going up there. I love hanging out with you guys. You guys have some of the better green chili cheeseburgers in the state. 
I'm missing that. What the heck? Can I get one delivered down here? Oh, that'd be a, a lift ticket that I couldn't pay for. But um, anyways, so delighted to see you're here. And you know, let me go through a couple more slides real fast. And I want to come back and hear from the chamber and a couple of these other folks. If you're, I can't see everybody online, but you know them, Victoria. I'd love to hear from them on what resources they provide to the community. Because that's part of what you're seeing here. And I'm seeing more and more as I look at these thousands of your businesses. Not only are they staying in touch with their customers, but they're in, they're involved in their community. It's about community support. It's it's sort of this idea that you're you know you're not alone. You're not an island. So you need people like uh, Rose and Victoria and Ava and others that are in the community to help you. And we all support each other. So um, I did put this in here. It was just. And normally when I have an audience in front of me, I'll have you put down some ideas that you would add to or you're hearing from. How can you make your company look more and build um, programs or add in efforts so that you can uh, create a longer term business? And then these are some additional readings. There's some great books here uh, that I found. Um, if I were up there, I was going to get, I always bring a couple books to my speeches and give them away, so I'm sorry. If anybody writes me and says, send me one of those books, I'll be happy to email, uh, mail it to you. I, I got, I bought a bunch of stamps the other day. I'm happy to do that. And there's some other articles. But the one that I want to point out to you is that make the 100-year business plan. That's interesting to me because that's so not what we're teaching in, in the business schools. We're teaching you to do more and more like these business model canvas, which is one year. But I think you need to really look long term because everything you're doing now is going to impact what you're going to do in the future. You know, actually, I do a lot of um, motivational speeches because I did a TED talk on how many weeks you have on the planet. So I, when I do those, I give away these clocks. They're called, I call them now clocks because you only ever have now. When I say, what time is it? And they go, it's two. I go, no, it isn't. It's now. It's only ever now. So if you're going to get something going, damn it, do it now. Put it in your plan and get going. So. Happy to send somebody a now clock. I'll make one for you. Send me an email. I'm in here somewhere. You can find me. I think that was my, yeah, that's my last slide. So let me do this real quick because I want to make sure I stay under the time limit. Uh, Victoria, you said somebody was here from the chamber. Any of you other organizations that are online, can you open up your mics and just give us your elevator pitch? What are you working on? How can we all connect into you and what resources do you have? I think the chamber may have just jumped off, but we have Elizabeth, who is with uh, Taos Main Street, who is a phenomenal partner in economic development. She's um, she's just great at what she does. So I'm hoping Elizabeth can can uh, say a few words. Hi, Elizabeth. You go by Liz. Oh, are you still muted? Um, we have Anwar as well from the Small Business Development Center from UNM Taos, who is basically working 24-7, uh, as you can all imagine. He is doing so much. He's doing wonderful things for our entrepreneurs. He's the one who's getting money into people's hands with, uh, with care and with, you know, everything that the SBA is doing. So we're really grateful for all the work that he's done. Um, I know he might be multitasking because right now he is just one call after another. So, um, you know, but I think Rose, who is really a master marketer, and I don't know if you all know Rose's background, and she's very humble and modest, but I think Rose needs to enlighten people as to what she's done in her life. So Rose, get back on. We on an elevator pitch. <laughs> oh my gosh, why do you do that to me? I think Elizabeth, Elizabeth, can they hear you? I think you I can, we can, can hear, you hear me now. now? We can hear yeah. you. Elizabeth. Oh, let's, let's let Elizabeth talk first. Yeah, please. Tell us, Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Which um, group are you with, Elizabeth, again? Well, I now have two handles. Okay. One is that I'm now part of the new SBDC COVID team, which is outreaching um, into community to say uh, to, to businesses to ask how they're doing and try to get them connected with resources. We're just in training right now. I've only been on board for about five days. 
And then um, the Taos Main Street. And Taos Main Street, we have an executive director, Charles Whitson, who's um, doing another project this morning. But um, we've been working, you know, Victoria talked about us collaborating together and looking at how we can collaborate. And we see Main Street's role really as trying to be the, maybe the thread in between all of the fantastic things that are going on in our community. And so we have uh, one of the things we've been doing with the businesses that are closed is we've been doing small 60 second videos. We've done about 15 of them. We've got about five of them edited and posted of uh, businesses downtown saying, how are you doing? This is what we're doing. This is where we are and offering messages of hope. We're posting those out all around. Um, trying to work with the collaboration so that perhaps we can develop a place of a, one, a, a landing page of resources for merchants where we all feed in and then merchants can go to a landing page and um, go back out uh, to the resources at the different uh, collaborative uh, partners websites. We're looking at getting something like that set up. We've just got funding to do um, some of these projects. The other is, um, working directly with businesses and our partners in the community to get the businesses the technology that they need. And some of this may actually mean paying for somebody to come in and work with them directly on their website if we can't leverage the resources from our partners in to really look at how the merchants are working. So we're, we're downtown, we're trying to say, we're here, we're going to be opening up. How do we use the resources in our community and, and keep the communication flowing? So what's, that's what's the best what way, we're up to. What's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Do you have a website or email? Yeah, TausMainStreet.org. Okay. Probably the best way. There's all the information is there for contact. Okay, for me. And then, uh, Rose, you mentioned something about retired executives. I'm noticing Vic Berniklaus here. He's one of my big heroes. He's with uh, Albuquerque Score, but Vic, can you make a comment about the Score folks? Uh, yes, uh, right now uh, Score is working with SBDC locally and uh, providing about a half a dozen webinars per day uh, that uh, in conjunction with SBDC. So this morning I had a, a presentation on doing business during and after COVID-19, and we've obviously got a number of others that. Uh, with in conjunction with information from the New Mexico EDD and uh, the on PPP, idle, uh, state programs, uh, SBA programs, overall uh, the, uh, the CARE Acts and uh, just as much information as possible to people during this uh, crisis in a sense uh, to not only continue their businesses but to prosper their businesses with a new set of thinking, not in terms of a victim kind of situation, but in terms of a new opportunities by taking a look at the new situation and then positioning your business so that you could take advantage of those new opportunities and be there the firstest with the mostest. Well, if, if there's any message there too, it's again, not the negative, the nine out of 10 that failed, I wanna hear about the one that didn't fail and how can I become that one? You know, it's that same idea. Now, Vic, you're down here in Albuquerque there's, is there a score in Santa Fe? And then is there a score group or way that you can connect? A lot of these folks are up in Taos or Northern New Mexico. How do, what would you say to them about how do they connect in? I know you have your website where you can right. connect with somebody all over the world. So it's not even New Mexico based, but any yeah. other, how do we get in touch with you, Vic? Uh, the, uh, we have a uh, ABQ, oh, correction, albuquerquescore.org uh, website that people can get to, but there is a, chapter in Santa Fe, a very active chapter, and a chapter in Las Cruces, as well as one in El Paso. So all of those have been uh, pretty active in this uh, coronavirus situation, trying to help businesses through their challenges. Well, I was gonna say, I know you guys have had lots and lots of seminars or webinars now. I, um, I every time I get an email about coronavirus, I put it in, I actually created a file called coronavirus. I think I've looked at it this morning, 283 emails from all over the state, but the EDD or Economic Development Department is probably one of the better ones, the Spano Chamber down here too. Lots and lots of incredible resources. Rose, do you guys have resources for the coronavirus too or COVID? I'm not sure what to call it anymore, but. You know, uh, um, yeah, we're working on that. Like Victoria mentioned, they're putting a lot of information, but um, 
uh, what we've been doing uh, from the very beginning, because there's so much information coming out to that's, our that's community. That's my problem. Yeah, we had, that, so we, about a number of weeks ago, um, we requested a meeting with, uh, actually, I, I think now three or four weeks ago. And, and so we've been meeting, the, the, all the service providers are meeting biweekly. So Main Street and Chamber and Hive, SBDC, TCEDC, uh, UNM. So we meet, you know, and, and the, the first meeting, the, the focus was how do we streamline information and how do we leverage each other's database to maximize funneling the, the information flow? Because it was information overload. Uh, and so what, what, what's, what came out of that is the chamber is taking in all the data uh, base information and we are creating a place where our community can go for all of the COVID information um, and other information within the community so that everything is kind of uh, streamlined um, to make it easier because it was overwhelming, you know. At first. It was overwhelming, although I know Alicia, our Secretary of Economic Development for the state, and her staff, are, Andrea and all the rest of them, they're amazing. Yeah. And I know they've been really trying hard to get everything connected, all of us connected to all these yeah. resources. So yeah, my hands down to them or hands up to them, whatever. We had, yeah, uh, Lanol, I think uh, um, we, we had a call last week with Lanol and Chamber and, and the task force to get all the information together. It's, uh, so we're communicating. That's, it, it's really about really getting together and talking to all of the different institutions. So we've got a few more minutes. I see Anwar's on here. I love your uh, bolo tie. <laughs> Just, yeah, that's a picture of another time. Anwar, can you comment too about your programs? So Stacy and all, just to let you know, I just I've been texting with Anwar. He had to take a client call, so it was kind oh, of like okay. a nine one one call. So, um, yeah. So he, he's great. I mean, he's just done a phenomenal job in working with our our entrepreneurs. Can you tell us what he what his programs are and what he's doing? Maybe just his. Can you do his elevator pitch for him real fast? Sure. <laughs> So, you know, Anwar is an expert in international business and marketing, yes. so he's got a wealth of experience that he brings to UNM Taos. We actually work together, so, um, you know, it's really, I've learned so much from him. So what he's doing is just that personal touch, that one-on-one -on -one in terms of just working with every single person that has had, um, you know, just this stress of being able to keep their doors open. So. He's working directly with all of the national programs as well as the statewide programs. We've also had a few local grant opportunities. And so he's developed this amazing network. We send out um, the information to people that we know. Um, you know, I was really proud that one of the business owners that I know was one of the first ones to receive uh, a loan from our local bank. And this was all from information from Anwar. So he's just, develop this amazing network and trying to get the information into the hands of the people that need it the most. And I think that's really where his skill is. It's just that ability to network and to get that information out where it needs to be. Thank you. <laughs> Put you on the spot there a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> Everybody puts me on the spot, so I'm just trading. <laughs> so I also have uh, Cecilia here, and I wanted to make sure you all knew that the STC uh, through Bill, who teaches several courses there on how to move your business online, is uh, starting up another Reco New Mexico Recovery webinar series, June 1st, six weeks, and uh, very excited about that. I'm also a mentor for the uh, UNM Taos group, as well as at the Rainforest. So every generally every third Friday, I'm down at UNM Albuquerque at the Lobo Rainforest. And then this afternoon, I'm available from 12 to four to be a uh, mentor to anybody who needs some other thoughts or help. I know a lot I know a lot about a lot of stuff, but mostly I'm a marketing person, so I'm happy to help with that. Uh, and since we've got y'all here, uh, Cecilia, did I miss anything about the recovery workshops? No, um, that all sounded pretty accurate. Um, the, so we've had one, of our New Mexico recovery um, workshops, which started in April, I believe. And 
Um, it's a series of webinars that teach you how, it walks you through how to put your business online, gives you strategies um, for um, e-commerce and having an online shop. And so we had such a high demand for that. Um, we decided to have another um, six week session, which will be starting um, on June 1st and you can register for that. Um, I can send out the information for that, but it's on um, our website. So I was excited for you to meet Ava there because she does uh, helps people move their businesses online too. She's got a stable of people. I think Bruce was on for a little bit who helps do websites. So, um, and then I think it was Victoria mentioned the um, Arrowhead project. Was that you or was that Anita? Anyways. That was actually Rose. And so oh, Rose, Rose okay. worked tremendously with that project. So I think, you know, if we have a few minutes to hear for about that. Yeah, and just, I'll just say real quick, the Arrowhead is the equivalent of what we do at UNM Anderson. This is the Arrowhead's, their business school. They have a student entrepreneur club that I created the same thing up at, at Anderson. And I go to their Friday meetings, they have a coffee hour. So because they were giving me a hard time that I'm UNM on their New Mexico State, I bought a New, I bought a New Mexico, you can't see it, but a New Mexico State coffee mug. So I'm drinking that when I'm on there with them now, so they don't give me such a hard time. <laughs> They were given. Now they're giving me a hard time the other way. It's like, how'd you get that cup? Who, who sold you that? You're not supposed to be having a New Mexico State cup. Come on. But anyways, yeah, Rose, can you tell us real quick about that their programs? Because I think we can all tap into that too. Yeah, it's a it's a great resource. Uh, I mean, they have they focus on uh, many programs, but what I've been focusing on is the Biz Sprint uh, and the Ag Sprint, um, and they have a Health Sprint also. Uh, but it's it's about a five week session, and um, they focus on the biz sprint focuses on the value proposition, the hypothesis that supports that and really gets them through the, that process. And once they finish that class successfully, they get a grant, um, you know, and um, in prior years, it's been about a $2,000 grant. So they could utilize that for their website or whatever, but we've worked so hard with them in the, in the three years that Taos now is considered an ASEP community. So it's Arrowhead Community Entrepreneurial Partnership. So, so and that is uh, called Studio G too, isn't that part of that? Yeah, no, Studio G is yours, but uh, oh, Studio G is you and Ams. Oh, yeah. Well, and, yeah, I better not look stupid here. Studio G, what? It's my program. No, I thought. Well, anyway, but I, I am. I, I visited with them. I've gone and and uh, visited the rainforest. It's. All, I mean, the most important thing right now is that it's all about doing what's right for our community. If there's a program that somebody has, let's, let's, get, let's, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Um, and it's been a really great uh, opportunity, just like, just like the relationship that we've developed with you, Stacy. I mean, everything, everyone we meet uh, will make a difference in our business community's life. So I wanted to do one quick commercial the other, I, so I teach three, four entrepreneurial classes, but I also am the director of the Small Business Institute at UNM. So if any of these companies that any of you represent or organizations want some students to do a project for you, yeah. right now I've got a teacher who's focused, he teaches two classes, one marketing, the other one promotions. Those students would basically, you'd be their class project for the semester to do a marketing plan. So I brought a couple of them. Here's one here. There's about 50 pages. We enter these in to a competition every year and we always win first, second, or third. I love that because some people put down New Mexico so much, whatever, Northern or Southern, you know, like we're the 50th of this. Nope, we're first in a couple of these award categories. There's a guy at North Carolina University who hates me. I'm like, I'm glad you hate me. <laughs> we're beating you. Isn't that great? We're the top. New Mexico's the top. But we would be willing to work with you to help you do these kind of plans. We uh, connect you to a student team of MBAs. So you can go to the SBI or Small Business Institute and sign up. And we've done projects for folks up in Taos. We probably need to work with you guys at, at UNM Taos School to see if there's another class we could tie in up there since you're local more than what we are because then we end up doing webinars with our clients. But Great resource. The other resource, I've always done these lists of local 
organizations. I've got the Albuquerque Entrepreneur Ecosystem. I had one for Northern New Mexico, which I shared at one of your other meetings. And this one specifically Taos. I cleaned it up a little bit, but I'm moving all of this to Ava now since she's up in Santa Fe and she's going to start publishing this. And I know that's why I was excited for you guys to talk because I believe you guys have another list or if you don't, you know, let's get you involved in this too so that we're all helping each other, all the, helping each other and then helping others connect to all these resources. I don't know. I think you're going to put that on your website at some point, Ava, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I have on this list here 76 organizations. The one for Albuquerque is 370. Um, the key point I want to make sure you hear is that there are a lot of businesses out there that are winning the race. They've been out there a thousand years or more, well, or less, actually but several hundred years and you can do that too. And I think it's just great planning, thinking through all the aspects of your business that you're gonna create systems so that you can be here a long time and not just be, you know, like the bands, the one hit wonder, let's not do that. Let's be here for a long time and create um, success stories for New Mexico. Um, anybody else who's here wants to say a word or two about anything they're working on? Happy to have you jump in, it's your shot. Matt, Brad, anybody want to say a word about who you are? They're all hanging out. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's They're okay. hiding. Rose, hey Rose, any last words? Or Victoria, I know you guys are doing such great work up you there. You know, the only last words, I, you know, I, I lost my father last year. And he oh, was an incredible mentor to me. But I'll, these are my last words, he would say. Number one, never forget where you came from. And number two, measure your success based on the success of those you serve. So those are my final words to everyone today. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah. I wish yeah, I'd met your dad. Man. Yeah, I bet he was. I bet he was. Yeah. All about <laughs> servant leadership. Victoria, anything on your, on your end? Not nearly as profound and amazing as Rose, but just thank you to all of you for the work that you do. I mean, you're making a huge difference in our communities and it is, you know, I, I, it's, we feel it and thank you. And thank you, Stacy and Cecilia and Kara yep. and the Rainforest yeah. UNM main campus. We're very grateful that you have allotted us this opportunity and bring this great resource to us. Um, so, your house is pretty amazing in how we get things done. And so, I, love, um, I love that drive up there to see the gorge. Are you kidding me? Oh, my yeah. God. Well, Stacy, yeah. just, just plan. You have a home at the Hive, okay? I'm coming. I want to get up there and see you're gonna I, You're going to come and plant those seeds of entrepreneurship for us once we get the doors <laughs> open. And we'll have a green chili cheeseburger waiting for you when you want to do <laughs> <laughs> oh Thank you God. for what you do. Stay safe. Okay, you too. And Cecilia, what, any last words? You're my, you're my host. You're our host. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, we Stacy is having virtual office hours after this um, with a different Zoom link. So, if you want to join him, I can set up a time. Um, I'm just gonna put my email address, and we can send you the link. So. Um, Anyways, but, thank you, Cecilia, for all the work you've done. She keeps me organized. That's pretty tough. <laughs> so, Stacey, oh, that's great. I join you on, on your um, mentorship time, but unfortunately, I have a couple of student issues that have come up, and I need to deal with that. So um, thank you again for being here, and we can hear uh, you. Thank you. It's always delightful seeing you guys. If you get a chance, go to the UNM Tiles campus. It's, she'll give you a tour. It's beautiful. You've got that one mural out there that I just was blown away by. It's incredible. So, okay, wonderful resource well. for the community. Ava, good to see you. Rose, good to see you. And Cynthia, where's your real picture? I I need to put my cat, my dog on here. Where is she? <laughs> so Cynthia's our <laughs> counselor at UNM Taos, and she got kind of voluntold to be on the call just so that she can hear what businesses are doing. So right. she's right. approaching this from the career counselor point of view. Oh, and fantastic. Her, yeah, and so uh, I work with her as well. So I had the whole team on. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, you know, 
we talk about that a lot down here is that you can get a job working for someone else, but the other way to do it is create your own job and you be your own boss. I mean, that's a whole nother option really. And that's to work with folks like you to start your business. You've got all these fantastic resources. Take advantage, you know, take advantage. So. Great. Um, Cecilia, thank you again. Thank you to Kara and Lisa and Lisa and everybody over at STC in the Lobo Rainforest. There'll be other programs. Stay in touch with all of us. We're all here for everybody. So, Rose, any any other little thing? You're done. We're done. Yes. We're done. That is uh, Stacy. God bless you. You be safe. Okay. God bless thank you. you. For, thank you for all your service to our community. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Bye bye.